gun to pest farm. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Oh crap, they're real. There is not a whole lot special about a leaf with a hole in it. And if I were to ask most people what bug did this leaf damage, caterpillars or maybe even mites are sure to come up on that list. But the difference between caterpillars, for instance, and leaf cutter bees, which is what we're talking about, which did that damage, is actually fairly easy to distinguish. Looking at just the points of activity, the leafcutter bee begins all of its holes from the outside edge of the leaf inwards, making clean, semicircular cuts out of the leaf. Whereas the caterpillar begins its holes in various areas, with no real method except to eat as much of the leaf as possible. Since leafcutter bees are not using the leaf material for feeding purposes like the caterpillar is, the holes are cut precisely for what the leafcutter bee can carry from here to its nest. But if they don't eat the leaf, what good is it really for? Nature has a way of using itself for its own gain. That's essentially what all bees do. But unlike the hundreds in a hive like you're thinking, leafcutter bees are solitary bees. Looks like a honeybee and stings like one too. Oh yes, they can sting, but only when handled. Although you may find them together sometimes, each bee is working for itself. There is no for the good of the colony because there is no colony. A leafcutter bee's entire goal in life is pretty simple. One, find a hole or holes deep enough to tunnel into and fashion a nest cell to hold larvae. Two, find more leaves to cut. Three, fill the hole with larvae, then plug it up with broken down leaf paste made up of leaves, nectar, and pollen. Four, seal the hole up for the young to remain in this cigar butt shaped nest cell until they emerge the next season to begin the leafcutter bee cycle once again. Of all the bees we encounter in everyday life, rest easy around the leafcutter bee. It'll be the nicest bee you'll ever meet. Today's topic, we are talking about the love bugs of the night. You guessed it, bed bugs. Bed bugs are no stranger to romance in the sack. That might not be suitable to put in the video. In fact, every second not spent sucking your blood, they spend romancing with the females in the cluster. And when I say romancing, I mean involuntarily, traumatically inseminating the females, whether they want it or not. This is essentially rape. However, bed bugs fail to see the use in common law. With clusters of bed bugs usually dominantly being a higher male to female ratio, female bed bugs are a constant sexual target, even if she is already knocked up or pregnant. So for a bed bug, showing affection is as easy as shoving your spear into the one you love or don't love. I don't think bed bugs care much about the human emotion love. Mainly, they just want to get that spear into a female. With so many bed bug males behaving this way, it is no wonder why female bed bugs move to isolated locations where she can be alone, safe from all the horn dog male bed bugs. Understanding that we as the people in the house with the bed bugs are not the only thing moving them around the house helps in finding and anticipating where their hiding places are going to be. In fact, it is almost a guarantee that a female bed bug will find another area, which is why this kind of anticipation is applied to our bed bug control programs. Ensuring that you have protection 360 degrees to kill any and all bed bugs who get the idea to move around the house. Thanks for watching our new pest vlog. I hope you enjoyed. Insert name, I will see you soon. And as always, BFTBA. If you like the vlog or have ideas for future vlogs, post us a comment or check us out on these social media sites.